similarity in right triangles. Okay, we're talking about in right triangles things that are similar. All right, if you have a triangle, let's say you have a right triangle. If you draw the altitude, which we know an altitude in real life is like uh, whenever, can you see that now? Great. All right. An altitude in real life is whenever you're measuring something from a distance straight down to the ground. Like you want the altitude of a plane, you go from the plane straight down and to the ground that makes a 90 degree angle. Okay, so in our right triangle, which looks not near as good as my other one, if we draw an altitude from the hypotenuse, be like right there, which means it makes a 90 degree angle. These triangles we formed are similar to each other, and they are also similar to the whole triangle. Okay? Good. So let's try uh, labeling this. A, B, C, D. Alright? Let's try all the similar triangles. Triangle A, B, C. We'll do that first. A, B, C. Now every other triangle we're going to try to match up with, uh, with that triangle. I'm glad that I pause when I talk. Alright, first thing, always match up. We put A first. It's our hypotenuse. Let's do that. Okay, so hypotenuse there. Let's do this triangle. This will be our second triangle. This will be our third triangle. Okay, uh, the right triangle here is D. Alright, and then the right triangle here is D as well. I'm sorry, yes, D for that third triangle. Alright, now let's find out what matches with B. In this triangle, that matches with B. And this next triangle, angle A is what matches up. And then in this triangle, it's going to be angle C. Alright, and then the last one, uh, we have to match up with B still over here. Oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. That's C. Alright, and then the last thing, the last angle would be C from the big triangle. We look at this triangle over here, that would be A. And that wouldn't be A, it would be B. And then over here, I think I've jacked this whole thing up, but what you're going to do is you're going to match it up, okay, with all the angles that it matches up with. Goody goody gum drops. I'm glad I could educate y'all so well in such a great way. Alright, whatever. That's pretty easy once you figure it out. They'll have angle measures that'll help you measure that and match everything up. I did not do that, however. So, next section. Or not next section, but next part, the last part of this you need to learn is called geometric, geometric mean. Okay? It means two numbers, like A times B equals their geometric mean, which is x, let's say geometric mean equals x, squared. Okay, so if you want, you can write it this way, square root of a times b equals our geometric mean. Either way is fine, okay, but you need to have those. All right, goody goody gumdrops. Let's try with some numbers, okay? Let's say we got four and nine. We're gonna find the geometric mean. Four times nine equals x squared. 4 times 9 is 36. What do we do to get rid of the squared? Square root. So B, 6 equals X. That's the geometric mean. Let's do it for 6 and 15. Well, it happens to be my birthday. Alright. So, 6 times 15 is 90. Equals X squared to get the square root. Most of the time they're going to want it in simplest radical form. So we do the square root of 90. Uh, we know 9 goes into it, square root of 9, square root of 10, square root of 9 is 3, 3 square, three, three square roots of 10, and that's your answer. Okay? And that's all you're looking for on geometric mean. Last thing you need to know on a need to know basis is how we can find the geometric mean. The reason I even taught you the geometric mean is so you can use it in right triangles, okay? Now, let's get us a big right triangle right now. Um, let's draw it like this. Okay? Right triangle. Alright, let's label everything. A, B, we'll call that one A, B, and we'll call this whole length C. Now let's draw the altitude right there. Name it X, Y, and H. H, height, that's Y, X, and Y. 
All right? Now, let's see what this term is. It says, the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the two segments of the hypotenuse. Okay, so that means that this altitude right here is the geometric mean of these two parts that make up the hypotenuse. Okay? That's all it's saying. Now, another thing you might not have known is that the legs, like the legs right here, they are the geometric mean of the hypotenuse and that height. Does that make sense? No. I'm sorry. I apologize. The legs of the triangle are the geometric mean of the side of the hypotenuse right next to it and the hypotenuse itself. Okay? So A squared equals X times C. Let me make sure I told you that right. Yes, I did. Alright, now for B, it's geometric mean. It would be the geometric mean of the side next to it, which is Y, times the whole thing, which is C. Okay? That's pretty much it. Not too shabby. Let's, uh, let's work some problems together, some example problems, okay? I'll leave these up here. Actually, I won't. I'll mark them off because you need to learn. The best way to learn is to throw you in the pool. <laughs> We're not swimming. What? Okay. See that catch? Is that okay? That was beautiful. All right. Let's say this is our X. Right here. We'll make uh, Z. You have to bear with me, I can't read. So I'm just kind of looking for patterns and stuff. Plus my books is in, books in French, so it's like a double negative. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm still not even really, I'm just talking, I'm not listening to what I'm doing. Okay, two. And then this will be X, I believe. No, it won't, it'll be Z. Uh, okay. That'll be Z, because I've already got an X. Uh, I'm stupid, okay. And then Y, and then 10. I'm sorry for that 20 minute intermission where I was thinking about what I want to do. Okay? So, let's say I want to find all these measures. Okay? Let's see. We know these two, and we know that this is the geometric mean of these two. So we do 2 times 10, which is 20, and we get the square root of 20 because we already did the x squared. Now I did a, skipped a bunch of steps, so I'll rewrite it. Equals x squared. That's 20, and then we divide by the square root to get that. Okay? So that's the square root of 20. Which if we do simplest radical form, that's going to be 2 times the square root of 5. But I'm going to leave it like this, okay? Because that's what I want to do and I can do whatever I want because I'm the math teacher. Now, you have two right triangles here, right there and right there. So if you wanted, you could do Pythagorean theorem to find that and Pythagorean theorem to find that. That's if you wanted to, okay? Or we can do what we just learned, okay? Now, we just learned that if I got the leg of a right triangle, right here, then this and the whole thing, which we know 2 plus 10 is 12, that's going to be our geometric mean stuff, okay? Equals z squared. That's 24. Get the square root of 24. We do simplest radical form, which is 2 times the square root of 6, and you're done. So 2 times the square root of 6. I guess I should write this, 2 times the square root of 5. And we do the same thing for y. Y equals, or I'm sorry, the geometric mean of 10 and 12. They need 120, so y equals the square root of 120. All right, then we get simplest radical form for that, and we get C60. Um, you get a number, who cares? I don't want to do it. And, peace.